This is a modern computer running Debian 7, that is Wheezy. And I'm logging in uh, to install Linrad here. As always, uh, I run as root because I find that far more convenient than using sudo. So the first step I have to do is to get the Linra source code. And I get that by uh, first installing subversion. Yes. Then I get the command to use with subversion uh, this way. W get This is a file I placed at my home page. It was a very small file. Then uh, print that on the screen. And then take this command and execute it. Copy and paste. And I don't have a key ring. And here comes the Linrad source code. And since this is a fresh install, there is only the standard Debian packages here. And to like make life easier for me, I make another directory. into which I make a copy. This means that I have the original files uh, left as they are if I want to go back to them for some reason. Now having Linrad installed uh, in this DSP directory, uh, I run configure and with help. And NASM is not present. I need to install that. And then configure with help again. And the development files for the sound system are, is not present, so I have to install it. I don't need sudo because I'm a root already. Copy and paste. And then configure with help again. And I need the library for uh, x11 his command copy and paste yes I'm going to install blade RF here so I run configure with help and then I have to go back here and look for 
the things needed for Blade RF. I don't need the SVGA lib. Uh, I can install this lib X EXT. That makes the screen a little bit faster. Get that. Copy. And paste. Yes. And again, configure with help. And lib blade RF. I have to install CMake first. Copy and paste. Yes. And then configure with help. And I have to look for the blade RF again. Was it here? Oh, I need git as well. Copy, paste, yes. And then again, configure with help. And then again, look for instructions. Lib Blade RF. We have to install Lib USB, the modern version. Copy and paste. Yes. What do you want to continue? Yes. And then again, uh, configure with help. And again, look for instructions. We have to install the package configuration thing, Debian and Ubuntu, copy, paste. And again, configure with help. Here, to install libbladerf, use this set of commands. Copy and paste. So we now get the source code from the GitHub site and it's the latest version available. And again Run configure. I don't use the with help anymore because it's easier to see that we don't see missing blade RF. All the other things are not needed for running the blade RF. So I don't install anymore. It was necessary to run this last configure because it builds the header files that because it builds the header files that are needed to compile correctly 
So now I can try make xlinrad and compilation is running. And now it's finished. I start linrad. And normal mode S enter font scale 2. This is a big screen. Use the uh, libraries. And I have eight CPU cores. I can block four of them. That means uh, blocking cores means that Lindra doesn't interrupt the FFT routines frequently to see if some other thread wants the CPU. There are many enough CPUs so they can run until they are finished with their tasks or interrupted by the scheduler. I go for fixed uh, screen size 1400 by 800 can be suitable and process priority normal. And here is Linrad running. Uh, now I will connect the blade RF. I press D for SSB mode. There are no parameters yet, so I get into the parameter selection screen. Uh, the transform size is 65,536. Uh, I make the transform s smaller by setting a larger bandwidth, 2 kilohertz, and 8192 8, is now the size of the transforms. They will fit in the cache memory of the processor probably. I make the window sign 2 power 1 rather than sign 2 power 2, which was the default and accept everything else and the frequency is 7 megahertz I change that to 950 megahertz and I want to see the entire spectral range so I click on the frequency scale and feed something small here 0 for example something big there 999 for example and then click on the apply and here we have now 10 megahertz with cellular phones I click on one of them and here we have something now uh, to see this signal properly I need a bigger bandwidth in the baseband that is obtained by XP and that don't change but I don't reduce the bandwidth as much I'd make that 4 instead and click a signal now I can step inwards here and you can see I have the signal within this baseband window so I apply a filter uh, I wanted to apply a filter that is wide enough for this signal. I'm not allowed to do that because uh, the sampling speed of the output doesn't allow it. So I have to change that. X, X, U. And I disable the loudspeaker. That's Z. And then X, X, save that and go to the SSB and then X and P and step here and I make this 5 instead that means half the speed 2 to 5 that's 32 times 10 megahertz divided by 32 that is 300 kilohertz 
something. So I make this 300 kilohertz. And again, try to click something. And does it work properly? Yes. Look at the timing. It's not 100% because it goes down a little bit now and then. Uh, I can probably make it a little bit more efficient by reducing the size of this window and clicking here. Now the FFT size is to, to the ninth, 2 to power 9. I can put the points a little bit further apart and then now it's a small transform and the load is not as severe anymore. To get a feeling for how it looks, I expand the window. Until it switches. That means here is the largest window I can have. And it seems I have a big enough fraction of this signal inside the passband. I will look with yes I can even reduce the bandwidth a little bit like this move the BFO outside the passband like that now uh, the this particular uh, whatever cellular phone type signal it is uh, is available in the baseband and can be received by some other software that would decode it. To send this signal to some other program uh, there are two options. One is to use the sound system and another is to use the network. And that will be discussed in some other video.